Liam, when you, you look on the first month or so of the season that's now passed, how would you assess it as a whole City player? Because there haven't been many defeats, but there have been an awful lot of draws, haven't they? Yeah. yeah, I think a very big thing in Premier League is, is winning games. Um, three points when the average target you need to stay in the league is 38 points, which is a point a game. So if you look at it in that way, three points is like three matches. So I think it's been a solid start. Um, the draw with Stoke, we're down to 10 men for a massive proportion of the game. Uh, winning at Queen's Park Rangers when they've been promoted is a, a, a very big achievement. So I think it's been a solid start. I think Aston Villa have started the season fantastically well. And that's why we found it so difficult there. And then the, the game against West Ham could have gone either way. It was an exciting game for the neutral. Um, I'm sure we enjoyed our attacking exploits, but maybe we could have tightened up a bit in, at parts of the game as well. So it's been a, a decent start, and hopefully we can build on that in the next month to come. With the international break that separates the, the Villa and West Ham games, it was a long way, wasn't it, after a disappointing uh, performance as well as the results against Aston Villa. With that in mind, was it pleasing to see the way the team bounced back against West Ham, or did you feel you let two points slip that way? Um, no, I think it's disrespectful to say we let two points slip. I think West Ham played very well on the night. Um, I think we played very well on the night. It was just a, a good Premier League game. I think they're the type of games that make the Premier League the best in the world. You've got two teams that maybe aren't fancy to be in the top six or top eight, still serving up a very competitive game, full of quality, great goals, great defending. And, and I think it was a great advert for the Premier League on a Monday night. In saying that, it would have been nice for it to be a good effort and then us end up with the three points. But it goes to show how hard every game in this league is and whether you're at home or away, you know you're going to come up against the top team and we've got another one tomorrow. And from Hull's perspective, presumably very pleasing to see the way two of the, the new signings on deadline day settled Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Abel's come in. I think he had one training session with us um, and his performance was outstanding. You know, he's, he scored a very good goal. Could have got another one, fantastic strike from outside the box, and um, that's a great start for him. I'm delighted for him for, for a striker to get off the mark in your first game is very important. And then obviously Mohamed Diame. Um, to be honest, he played on the left for West Ham last season. I was playing right back against him, and uh, Sam Allardyce took him off, and I nearly celebrated like it was a goal. To be honest, because he was causing me all types of problems with his his strength and his technical ability, and he showed that with his goal as well. So. Two great signings, and then obviously Gaslon and Hatem, as well as all of the other signings we've made in the summer, people like Andy Robertson, Michael Dawson. The, the club's gone up another level, and it's fantastic to be a part of. Newcastle then this weekend, a club that has its own problems. Um, people obviously think back to last year and what happened here. Um, are the players able to put that to one side and yeah. just move on? The most important thing is winning the game. I have no interest in what anyone is speaking about off the pitch. I think if you get um, into that kind of thinking, your your focus isn't there, you can't perform to your maximum that you could do if you're fully focused on the game. So whether I'm playing or not, all I'm focused on is my performance. How I perform will get us the win that we need to, to do what we want to do, which is to finish as high in the league as possible. With all the talk though of potential demonstrations against Alan Pardew from the Newcastle fans, is there a feeling amongst the players here that if you can get on top of Newcastle early, there's a real opportunity? Yeah, definitely. I think if you get on top of any team early, you've got an opportunity of winning the game. The, big, the most important thing is that we win the game. So you get distracted by, the, by things that aren't a part of the game. That's when you come unstuck. I'm sure the Newcastle players will be focused. Um, they've got a lot of top, top players there. They've brought a lot of very good players into the building. Jack Colback, I played with at Ipswich, a fantastic midfield player. It's not going to be a walk in the park as people expect because the manager's under pressure there. It's not nice to see any manager under pressure. Uh, my dad lasted 10 minutes in a job when he was a manager. So to see uh, managers under pressure and be treated the way they get treated sometimes is hard. But at the same time, we've got to do what we want to do, which is win the game. Uh, Liam, um, you are now one of the longest serving players. I think I remember asking you something similar over one of the previous deadlines, but you look at the squad now and can you really uh, believe how the team has evolved in the time that you've been at the football club? Yeah, I think um, I got asked this question before. Uh, when you have ambition and you've got the right people at a football club, 
you know, obviously the manager and the coach and stuff have done an incredible job here. Um, not just here, but at Swansea, Southampton. You, in football, things evolve very quickly if you have the right people in the right places. And I think we're a case in point here. People like Michael Dawson, Tom Huddleston, Jake Livermore from Tottenham, and Hatton Ben Arthur. This time last year, we were talking about being the best player in the Premier League. I remember playing Newcastle last season, playing left back, having sleepless nights, thinking I've got to deal with him tomorrow. Um, so for him to come in shows how quickly things can evolve. But that's why we all love football, because things can change so quickly. And um, hopefully they'll keep evolving in a positive way for us. Just back to the, uh, the Hammers game at, um, on Monday night. Um, a lot of pundits had decided after that game that neither side were going down, that here were two sides that were looking like established Premier League sides. If you are analysing the game, like your dad would be if he was doing a, a football match on TV, how would you view the futures of both of those sides based on that performance? Based on that one game, um, I think the pundits are right. But football's not played over one game, it's played over 38. And you go through periods of good form and you go through periods of bad form. And it's about maintaining a level where when you're not playing well, you're still good enough to get results. And when you're playing well, then you'll automatically get results. I think that's the most important thing. So with the squad that we've got now, I think that the consistency level should improve where we don't get too many long runs of bad form because we've got players who can come in if there's injuries and perform at the same level or if not better than ones that are already in the team. And that's why the manager's built such a st strong squad here because you need it. This is the best league in the world. Um, not, not just I'm saying that people like Jose Mourinho who've worked at different countries now with the experience of going to Italy, to Germany. He says this is the hardest league in the world because every week you never know what the result's going to be. And if it's hard enough for him at Chelsea, then it's hard enough for teams like us and West Ham every, every week in this league as well. Sure. Um, and you alluded it to, to it earlier, if you take your <coughs> focus off the game and concentrate on what's happening under the scenes at Newcastle, you're going to get yeah. body spanked. But if, uh, if things do come good for you, is the manager working on his dance moves after last season and his little jig down the touchline? Have I you been giving so. him some um, advice? I hope so. But no, I think that's, you know, all you can do is be yourself and to see the manager so happy. Uh, Shawnee's goal last season shows what it meant to him and when you see your manager celebrating that way you know that he's part of the group and he's delighted for you when you do well and I think that's why we, we've we we've done so well because we all want to play for him he's, a fantastic, he's done a fantastic job here he's a great man he has a lot of respect and he earns the respect of the players and the way that he treats us and it, I'm not surprised to see him linked with, with other clubs vacancies or, or if, there, if there are vacancies sorry um, because he's done a fantastic job here and he, he should get the recognition that he deserves. One final question for you, and it's about your position in the team, because obviously you're, you know, you're fighting for a place in an ever-growing eleven. You know, with all the quality that you've mentioned. You know, how frustrating at this stage of your career is it that you're not getting a start week in, week out? I think, yeah, obviously every player wants to play. I'm no different, so it is frustrating. But with the experience that I've got now, um, I'll, I know that my chance will come and it's up to me to make sure that my levels are right so when my chance comes, whether it's tomorrow, in next week or maybe in a month's time, that I take my chance and stay in the team because I know that I'm playing for a manager who's fair so if I play well I stay in the team and I think that's the motivation for everyone who's not in the first 11 at the moment is when they get their chance they stay in the team so I'm, I'm frustrated but at the same time I want the club to do well. And, uh, sorry, I just said it was my last question this is, when you analyse your career have you played your best football at all, City? Um, I, yeah, I think as you get older, you, you get better. But in saying that, um, at Fulham I played 100 Premier League games. You know, it's not a coincidence that I'm back at this level now and, and doing a half-decent job. I've always felt like I can play at this level. But I'm more comfortable, in fact, at this level than I am in a championship, which is a bit more physical. And I've never been the biggest or most aggressive of players, so... It's been a long road back for me, um, you know, it's been a difficult few years, but it's made me a stronger person, it's made me a better player, and hopefully my best football is still to come in my career, rather than, rather than behind me. Good answer, thank you. Just one question from Elian. <clears throat> Just thinking, there's a West Brom uh, next week. Um, the Cup was, was, was very good to you last season, the FA yeah. Cup. Does that give you a sort of renewed appetite for, for the Capital One Cup, perhaps? Definitely. When you see um, how much it meant to the city, that we'd made it to a major cup final. It gives you motivation to go and do it again. I think what helps us even more this year is again the size of the squad and the quality within the squad where the manager could make 11 changes, probably 15 changes, 
And we still have a team that's more than capable of going to West Brom and getting a result. So I think all bold, bodes well for the future, not only in the league, but also in the cup competitions that I'm sure we'll be taken very seriously this season.